thank you everyone for coming. Um, as I've mentioned a few times today, um, I will be giving you a short introduction today into uh, version control with GitHub. And this is uh, quite gentle. It's an introduction for beginners. So if you don't have any experience with GitHub, um, you're in the right place. Um, and because I think most of you have never met me before, I also wanted to say a little bit about me. So hi, I'm Irini. Um, and uh, I wanted to share a little bit from my background, just so you know that I'm also fairly new to uh, Git and GitHub. So I, I understand frustrations that uh, new users have. So my background is actually in humanities and social sciences. Um, I started you know, my academic journey and like English language and literature. And during this time, you know, I was as far as you could get from like any kind of programming, I did GitHub statistics even. Um, that started changing uh, the further I got uh, into like my research career. So I got into statistics a bit in my master's, but it was in my PhD that I started using R, uh, which is a programming language. Um, quite extensively for my data analysis. Um, and I started using Git as well uh, to version control mostly my code. But at that point, I was just working by myself, um, doing things just on my laptop. I wasn't really sharing um, those version controlled uh, scripts that I was writing. Um, I, after my PhD, I joined as a trainer on research data management and open science at the Delft University of Technology. And at that point is really when I started using GitHub a lot more frequently, uh, mostly for sharing resources um, like these slides, which you can find on GitHub, and I will show you where uh, later. And also contributing to like open source projects that had to do with like training and reproducibility and stuff like that, uh, because those are the things that I'm interested in. And later, uh, about a month ago, I started as a community manager um, here at Turing, uh, where I use GitHub almost daily, not quite, but almost. And it's mostly for collaborating with um, different people. So, you know, this has been a gradual process for me. Um, and yeah, I am still very much in the process of uh, learning about the things that you can do with Git and GitHub. So, <clears throat> You might be wondering, you know, what even is version control? And version control is quite a, um, a broad term. Um, version control is an approach to recording changes in a file or a set of files over time so that you and your collaborators can track the history of those files, review any changes that were made on those files, and importantly, go back to earlier versions um, if an earlier version had something that was useful. So this is visualized here where, you know, if you don't version control uh, your files, you might end up with this like bunch of files where you don't know, um, you know, where things are, what the most recent version is. Um, and if you do version control your files, everything is much neater. It's much easier to know what the first version was and what the final or latest uh, version is. So that's version control in a nutshell. Um, and it's quite likely that you've already been using some kind of version control. So one approach uh, to versioning your files is to store uh, different versions of your files um, in, different, um, in different files. So you have maybe a manuscript that you've been working on, a paper, and you want to make um, a big change. Maybe you make a copy of that file. Um, and you implement your new changes in that new file so that you don't like break anything that you can't like, you know, go back to. Um, and you could, you know, use the name of the file to version control. You know, you can say that something is version one, version two, version three, or you can add some like, you know, more semantic labels where like this is a draft or this has comments from, you know, collaborator A and stuff like that. So, Something like that would look like this, where maybe you have a copy of like say some data um, that you've been working on um, and you want to make some changes. So you make a copy so that you don't lose your previous work and you implement some change. Like maybe you filter your data and you add that information in the file name. 
Um, and then later you also want to do something else to your data. So you um, also do like a count and you save that information in the file name. So that kind of works, right? That gives you an understanding of like what the content of each file is. And you can, you can see like um, how your work progressed. Um, but it can still be pretty hard to know what the exact uh, content, how the content exactly changed um, from file one to file two to file three. So something that can help with that is uh, keeping your versions in one single file. So there, instead of making multiple copies of the same file, what you do is you save the history of the file or the timeline of that file within uh, the file itself. Um, so you've probably experienced something like this already if you use Google Drive or Dropbox or Overleaf. All of those uh, programs allow you to um, kind of like explore the history of a file. But what they allow you to do is a bit more limited compared to something like Subversion or uh, Git. And what that looks like is something like this. So you start with your file, you create you know, the file, you add a bunch of content, um, and maybe you make some deletions, you make some edits, and you know, so on and so forth. You change your file as it goes on. And what's really nice about saving all of these changes within that same file, right? Like this is the timeline, these are not different files, is that you can go back in history, you know, you can see, oh, uh, what was it that I deleted over here? I think that was a mistake. Um, and maybe take it and put it back uh, into like a future file. So that's really nice. Um, and again, this is visualized here, where here you have like separate files, and here instead you have one single file. We can easily move from like version one to version three to version six and see how the file changed. Um, so that is kind of what version control is. Um, I think the benefits are easy to see in terms of data management and documentation, right? If you're using that version control uh, in a single file uh, kind of approach, then uh, you'll always be working with the latest version of a file. So you won't have to worry about maybe sending a collaborator, you know, like the version from two revisions ago or something like that. Um, saving the history within the file also makes it a bit easier to figure out um, what it is uh, at those different stages, uh, which, you know, if you've gone back to like a manuscript or uh, some code from like six months ago, um, you know, it's not always easy to remember what it is that you did at various points. Um, and by saving the history, um, you can also revert to a previous version uh, with a fair amount of ease. And if you're working uh, using GitHub, which again, we'll get to later, uh, you'll also always have backups because GitHub um, is online. So you have a separate copy of your work. Okay, so I've talked about Git and GitHub a lot. So what are these things? So Git is one of the most widely used version control systems in the world. It is both free and open source, which is great. Uh, if you have a Mac or a Linux machine, um, Git is probably already installed. You can just like start using it immediately. If you're working on a Windows machine, uh, it's something that you'd have to install first. So I mentioned this partly just to like, you know, make it clear that Git is just like software that lives on your computer and you can use for things on your computer. And the things that, so the way that Git works in a really, really like uh, simplified um, explanation is that it takes snapshots of your project at different points in time. So it tracks how it changes by taking like a picture of what it looks like at different points in time. And this doesn't happen automatically. Um, so it's not like, you know, on Google Docs, you make some edits and you don't have to save it or anything. You just like close the tab um, and all of the, you know, um, history is saved. Um, with Git, you have to choose when you want to take this like snapshot of your work. And we call taking a snapshot, making a commit. And I think the name is kind of informative here. So when you commit your work, you view how your work has changed. So Git will show you uh, the previous version of your file and the current version of your file. And it color codes uh, things that were added and things that were um, deleted. 
And it shows you these differences and then you have to write a commit message that explains um, what changes you made and ideally what your motivation for those changes was. Um, so this is quite nice because like by virtue of having to like choose um, when you you know, take a picture of your work and you have to explain what those changes are, Git can help you to work um, in a way that you make coherent changes to your work. You don't just like haphazardly change one thing here and one thing there that are kind of unrelated. It kind of makes you work a little bit, yeah, in a more focused way. Um, and these commit messages are things that you use when you view your, uh, the history. Um, and can help you navigate at which point in time you want to go back to. So with GitHub, um, so Git only allows you to work locally on your computer. As I mentioned, it's files that you have stored locally. And you know, unless someone has access to your computer, um, they can't see the files that you have been working uh, on and tracking with Git. Uh, GitHub is something that solves that problem. It's a popular website that hosts uh, and lets you share your projects that you have been tracking with Git. Uh, so this allows other people, uh, your collaborators, to work on your project at the same time. And that's kind of what that looks like. Um, so if this is you and these are your collaborators, you know, you're all working individually on your own laptops and you're editing different documents. So let's say that you make some changes over here and you describe what it is that you made. So this is like what your commit message would be. You removed persistence commits, um, whatever that means. Um, and another collaborator worked maybe on a different file and um, they explained what they did and so on and so forth. So everyone can work together on the same project, even on the same files. Um, online uh, with ease, and it's very easy to track what everyone has done. So just to give a, a bit of a summary of what I just said, so version control is the practice of keeping track of changes in files, and it helps you document your work and collaborate. Git is one of the most widely, uh, widely used version control systems. And then GitHub is a website that hosts and helps you share projects that you have tracked uh, with Git. Um, so I can pause here for a bit to see if there are any questions. Uh, you can put your questions in uh, the HackMD, please. Uh, that would be ideal. Uh, but of course, you can also just like unmute and ask your question live. Um, we are recording the session, so if you do, uh, please be aware that you will be recorded. And <clears throat> if there are any questions on HackMD Sophia, please let me know. Erini, there's a question from Dave in the HackMD. Um, asking if you can pull out details on who contributed to the development of the document and how much less when a contribution happened. Uh, yes, absolutely. So that is like uh, one of the main points of using uh, version control. Uh, it allows you to very easily see, um, yeah, it, th because this saves the history, um, as it saves the changes, it also saves information about who made these changes, when they made those changes, and exactly what those changes were. So absolutely, uh, both Git and GitHub let you do that. Yeah, thanks, Irene. I'll, I'll type that in, and your magical slide just kind of answered all those questions. So. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that. Cool. Um, Mon, uh, there aren't really any limits uh, as to how many people can work on the same document at the same time. Um, it's more of a question of uh, managing all the edits that people are making. That is like, uh, technically, I think there isn't a limit. It's more of a management um, question. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, Sophia. <laughs> Cool. Um, so because we don't have that much time, I will uh, move on. But if you have more questions, keep them coming. I can also uh, answer any 
uh, questions that come into the HackMD after the session. So it's now time uh, for you to uh, open a new browser and uh, we're going to go to github.com. So I'm just going to do uh, the same thing. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new private window. So I am doing the same thing as you are. So we're all going to github.com. So, Irene, if you want to switch your screen, I think you're just showing this Firefox window. We can't see the private window yet. <laughs> yes, uh, good point. It's okay. I'll just open a window here and I'll just have to log out and log in again. So, github.com. Um, so, uh, this is what you should be seeing uh, if you just went to github.com and you've never signed in before. So um, you can see that, you know, GitHub already tells you to sign up. So all you need to do is type in your email address here and click on sign up for GitHub. Uh, I would encourage you to use your work uh, email address because um, that is visible when you make uh, commits sometimes. Um, and you might prefer to share your work email address rather than your personal email address. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, as you can see, I can't really uh, walk you through making an account myself because all of my emails are taken, but basically you'll be asked to create your email and then create a password and then create a username. And um, that username is what people um, will mostly see when you do things on GitHub and it is quite hard to change. Changing the email that's associated with your GitHub account is trivial. Changing your username is not. Um, so pick something that you will remember and that is sensible and that you are happy to share with your collaborators, basically. Um, and once you have done that, um, you'll have to sign in. But, um, uh, but yeah, the instructions are here. Um, and once you're ready and you have your account, uh, please um, put the username that you have created in the HackMD roll call. We will need that um, for an exercise that we'll do uh, in a bit. And once you're done and you've signed in, uh, please give us a thumbs up or um, a green check mark or whatever from the reactions in Zoom uh, to let us know that you are ready. And I can't really see the participants very much, uh, Sophia, so let me know when you think we've hit a critical mass of uh, thumbs up. And I will move on. Got a few scattered around. <laughs> Once you've made an account, um, you'll still need to sign in. So you'll see something like this. You can either add your username or your email address here and your password, and then just click on sign in. Have we stopped getting more thumbs up, Sophia? I think everyone can't see any more thumbs. We've got one more thumbs up there, two more, three. I think we're still waiting on a few. If you are having any um, trouble, please feel free to post in the chat or DM me directly. Um, we can get you unstuck. I think That's we're... Awesome. I want to say we've reached consensus. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to sign in now. Um, and that's it. I'm on GitHub now. 
Uh, so you will see something similar to this when you sign in yourselves. Um, it won't be exactly the same because um, this is quite personalized to me. So this is basically like a social media timeline. It shows me like notifications from like people and projects that I've been following. Um, on the left hand side here, you can see uh, projects that I've been working on recently, uh, what I've done, uh, what activities I've done on GitHub recently and stuff like that. So these are just like, you know, some like bookmarks or start things basically. Um, if you know what you're looking for, you can also use uh, this search bar here. Um, if you know the name of someone whose code you want to look at or a project that you're interested in, uh, you can just type the name here and it will come up. Um, where I'm going to go is over here all the way to the right to where you can see like um, a picture or an avatar uh, for your account. Um, and I'm just going to go to my profile and show you a little bit what that looks like. So you can see like <laughs> a very old picture of me. I should probably change that at some point. Um, and you can see I also have space to add um, a bit of a blurb. That's basically like a thing that's about me. Um, I think that's a very useful thing for uh, academics to have. Um, you know, a space online where you can add your contact information uh, that's not dependent on your you know university, as they don't always give you. Um, space for a profile and stuff like that. Um, so it's just really nice to make you findable on the internet in case someone you know wants to contact you, to talk about your work, to invite you to things. Um, I've heard it quite a lot from people that academics are often just like very hard to reach and very hard to find up-to-date contact information for. So that's a very nice way to, uh, that's a very easy way, I should say, to uh, do that without uh, faffing around with an actual website. Um, and here I can see some like projects that I'm working on and you can see like my activity on GitHub over the past year. Uh, June is when I joined the Turing, so you can see um, that changed how much time I spent on GitHub. Um, and over here uh, I can see um, the repositories that I've been working on. And repositories is one of those special words on GitHub that means something else that most people uh, are familiar with. Um, so a repository on GitHub is basically just a project. So wherever you see repository on GitHub, you can substitute for the word project. So it's a place where you store all uh, your files that you're working on for a project. And um, projects can be public or they can be private. So as you can see, all of my um, repositories on my personal account are public, so anyone can go and look at them. But uh, GitHub also gives you the option to have private repositories where people can't uh, just go and look at the contents um, of your files and stuff like that. Um, I also want to uh, clarify that just because my repositories are public, and people can look at them, that doesn't mean that anyone on the internet can go and like change my files because they think I made a mistake or something. Um, they can suggest changes to me and I can choose to accept them, but I can also choose to ignore them. Um, the only people that can make changes directly to my repositories are people that I have invited and given access for them to do that. So this is what a repository looks like. Um, so there are a lot of buttons. There's a lot of information here. I'm not going to walk you through everything because it's a lot and you don't need everything at the moment. Um, over here, you can see like the username uh, under which um, the repository is based. So this is my username. This is the name of the repository. Um, in these tabs over here, I'm only going to talk about this code one today. Um, I'm going to talk about branches if I have time. Um, with these buttons um, over here, uh, that allows you to create new files in your repository. You can create one directly just on the GitHub interface, or you can upload files that you have on your uh, laptop already. And this green button over here that says code is the button that allows you to basically download 
this repository and there are different options you can download a zip file or you can use different um, get specific um, options to get the code that is currently online on this github repository locally onto your computer um, over here i can see uh, the latest commit um, so you can see who made the latest commit uh, the uh, commit message uh, when that happened and over here with this little clock you can see the history so that goes to what you asked Dave so this is like the history of this repository and you can see exactly who made changes um, you can see when those changes were made and uh, from here you can also access the repository uh, and the files at those different points in time so like say 13th of June um, I can go and see what that looked like and I can see what changes Sophia made I can see what changes I made so it is amazing for like tracking people's uh, contributions uh, to a repository um and yeah these are the files themselves um and over here we see a preview of uh the readme file over here readme files are special files on github um and they are always uh shown um so that's a great place to explain to people what your repository is about and how they can use it um so this repository is an aim rsf repository um where we have like all the information that you need to get started and start uh, contributing to the MRSF. So there's a bit of background, the different themes that the RSF has, and how you can um, get in contact with us. And this is actually um, this repository that I have that lives under my username, but it's actually a copy. I made a copy from the original, which is over here. And you can see that here the username is AIMRSF. This is a special kind of account, the AIMRSF one. Um, it is an organization. Uh, and organizations are basically just shared accounts um, that are very useful when you're collaborating with the same people over the duration of the project. So organizations are great because they help you, um, you know, keep all of your repositories in like one place that everyone can find. So if I, for example, made a repository about something and it lived under my personal username, then Sophia made a repository about something and it lived under her username, it would be quite difficult to keep track of all of those things, right? Um, so an organization lets you keep track of everything that's relevant. It collates all of them into one place that everyone can go and look at. Um, and it's really nice that you can just add the collaborators, right? Like the people that can make changes to your repositories just once. Uh, you add them to the organization and then um, they're generally able to see uh, the repositories that exist in that organization. And you also have a little bit more uh, flexibility there with what people can and um, cannot see. So that's the idea behind the organization. And yeah, the AMRSF also have, uh, we have our own organization. And here you can see an example of what I was talking about. We have some public repositories, we have some private repositories. So the public repositories, everyone can see the private repositories, only the people um, in this um, organization can see. And this over here. Is, uh, can you explain yeah. the difference between like, you know, we've got this big organization, we've got all these repos, um, but you mentioned about how like only some people added to those repos can see mm -hmm. uh, if it's a private one. Can you just explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, so basically um, I can see this private repository about community management because I am logged in as a person that has access to that. If I was logged in as a person that doesn't, that hasn't been added to this community management repository, uh, that would be invisible to me. Um, so that's something that helps you keep, you know, give access only to the people that need access um, to different pieces of work uh, that you are doing. Um, who, who decides who gets access? <laughs> so, um, if it's your own personal account um, that the repository lives under, then it's you. 
because you are the owner of that of that repository. Uh, in an organization, uh, it's the owners of that organization. Uh, so for the AIM RSF, I think that's me, Sophia, that's also you. Uh, are there any other owners for the AIM RSF organization, Dave? Yeah, so uh, each repository can have an administrator um, and um, multiple maintainers. So, for example, we could have repositories um, that belong to each of the AIM RSF, that only members, um, sorry, each of the AIM consortia, um, that only them um, are able to kind of access and see, and then the PIs or the, or the project managers are the administrators, so they get to decide who has access. Um, and then anyone in the parent organisation, um, for example, Irene, myself, Dave, um, who have admin rights, we can then also help out um, if need be. Yes, so there are different roles that people can have within the organization. There is a lot of flexibility there uh, with whom you can give access to and what abilities they have to make changes in your repository. Um, so we don't have very much time, so I think I'll just show you a demo of um, how you can do things in a repository. Uh, and I think we'll have to leave it at that at that point. So this repository is um, the repository that I created to make these slides. Uh, so this is the file that basically has the slides. Um, and what I wanted to do is um, create a file where we can all add our names so we can get a little bit of practice with um, making commits and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll just show you how to do that. So I'm just create. I'm going to create a new file. So I clicked on that button that said uh, add file and on create new file. And I'm going to name this uh, intros. Uh, so that's the name of the file. And I'm going to add an extension for MD, uh, like in HackMD, that stands for a, hack, uh, hack and, for a markdown file, sorry. Um, and then I'm just going to add a title to it. So whoops. Uh, it's a new keyboard, I'm struggling with it a bit. Uh, yes, so I'm just going to give this the title introductions, and that is all I'm going to do. So what I've done is I've created a new file, I've added, you know, <laughs> one word to that file. I'm happy with my change, I'm ready to commit my file. So committing, remember, is when we take like a snapshot uh, of your uh, file and you're happy with that change. So first, uh, so this is the message uh, that I have to write. I mentioned uh, that you have to add commit messages. So I'm quite happy uh, with this. It's a good description of what I've done. I've created uh, the intros.md file. And I'm just going to click on commit new file. And in this case, I'm going to commit directly to this main branch. I don't have time to talk about branches after all today, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, that's just what I'm going to do. Um, and I've saved it. It is now here. I can go and look at my file and I can go edit it by clicking on this pencil and adding more things and making more commits. Um, so I think that's all I have time for because we only have two minutes left. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, and um, yeah, I'm sorry that we didn't have very much time to show you everything. I also wanted to show you uh, how to collaborate on GitHub a bit uh, because right now we only know how to make commits uh, for ourselves. Uh, a huge issue is what happens if multiple people are working on the same file and they want to change the same bits in the same file. So that's where that word branches uh, comes in that I mentioned a couple of times. Um, I don't have time to talk about that today. I'm very sorry. Um, if you look at the hack and D file that we have shared for this session, um, I have listed uh, a few resources. Uh, and there you can go and um, find more information about how to get started both with Git and with GitHub. Um, and yeah, I'm very happy to also like answer more questions now if people have time. You can also email me uh, if you want to find out more. 
Um, and in the HackMD, I also have a section for like feedback about things you liked and things you didn't. If you could still go and like add some uh, feedback for me there, I would really appreciate it. Um, but it is now one o'clock and I don't want to keep you for longer than I said I would. Um, so thank you so much for coming today. I hope you learned something and I hope uh, that was useful. Um, and yeah, do let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>